Hello and welcome to Wheel Life, the video diet that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. And in this episode, I'm going to help you to overcome one of the biggest obstacles and fears for most new riders. Yes, I'm going to give you the tips, the tricks and the skills to be able to jump up curbs. Let's get started. So I get that jumping up a curb can be a very daunting experience, particularly if you don't want to fall flat on your face, damage your wheel, or get laughed at by the group of hooded youths with their skateboards standing at the bus stop. But there are three things you need to get right. The first thing is you need to understand the mechanics, understand what's going to happen. Second thing is you need to get the timing right. And the third thing is you need to perfect the execution. So let's start with understanding the mechanics. There's a few things to do before we get started. First of all, make sure your unicycle has got plenty of air in the tyre. If you've got a soft tyre, you could damage the rim and that could be an expensive replacement. So make sure you've got 35 to 40 psi of air in those tyres. Also make sure you're wearing your body armour and your crash helmet, uh, which is also important when you're learning a new skill. But let's look at the mechanics of what's going to happen when your wheel makes contact with the kerb. And the wheel I've chosen to show you this on today is the rather beautiful InMotion V12, a wheel I have fallen completely in love with. And I'm using this because it's got a relatively small 16-inch diameter wheel. And that's important because I'm going to demonstrate that even with a small wheel, you can still get up a kerb. It's got no suspension, no other trickery. It's not got a big 24-inch wheel that's going to eat up bumps. It's a small wheel, but the kerb is still absolutely doable. And watch what happens. When I'm going to push this wheel forward, don't forget, it's got a powerful motor in here, it's got forward momentum, and that momentum and that motor is going to cause the wheel to behave in a certain way. So as I push it forward, I'm not picking up the wheel, I'm not carrying any weight, I'm just going to run it forward, and watch how the wheel hits that kerb and jumps into the air. Let me just do that again, so I'm just running it forward, I'm not carrying the weight, I'm just going to run it forward, it's going to hit the kerb, when it hits the kerb, it jumps up into the air. Now that wheel is going to behave exactly the same when your huge fat middle-aged weight is standing on top of it. It's going to behave in, same, in the same way, just that you're on top of it. And therefore you've got to learn how to behave and how to control the wheel as it goes through that perfectly safe, perfectly natural motion of jumping up that curb. So we've talked about it in theory, now let me show you it in action. And I found a perfect place to practice a nice open space with a decent sized curb and importantly a good runoff area in front of me you don't want three feet and then a brick wall or a pond and ideally if you can't find a place where there's different gradients of curb perhaps where the curb drops down for pedestrians or cars then practice there because you can build up your confidence on increasing heights of curb but here we are i'm going to show you how it works so i'm going to approach here at a constant speed you need a bit of motion you need a bit of forward momentum if you go too slow you are going to stall so you need to have a decent amount of steady pace to it my knees are flexed importantly my feet are in against the body of the wheel so my feet are not going to be away off to one side and that means my legs are nice and pressed tight up against the body of the wheel and that gives me much better full control of the wheel it's not flapping around so feet nice in and holding the wheel firmly in between your legs and I'm waiting as I approach the curb for that point of contact because I know the wheel is then going to bounce up on its own all I need to do is to be in control of that bounce so when it hits that curb I'm going to pop up from my knees bounce up with the wheel in control get a bit of air and land it perfectly let me show you how that works so a nice constant speed knees bent hit the wheel oh and there we go pop it up coming down as well important just flex your legs and just pop it down as well It's really important that you wait for that point of contact before you try and jump. If you try and jump too soon with today's modern heavy wheels, there's a good chance you'll jump, your feet will come off the foot plates, you'll leave the wheel behind, then it will hit the, the curb, you'll be off the wheel as it does that, and you'll be out of balance and it could fall off. So it's important that you wait until you get that first point of contact. Hold your nerve, hold your nerve. When you get that contact, come up with the wheel. Let me show you again. 
So knee flexed, wait for contact, and up. Easy as that. And let me pop it down. So that's how you can do it on a 16 inch wheel. Let me show you now on a much larger wheel because it's a slightly different experience because the wheel does all the work for you. Let me show you. So this is a dusty old beast of a wheel. This is my monster that I did a thousand mile trip around the UK uh, with Ian Samson. Uh, and because these bigger wheels, even like the Sherman 20 inch wheels, 24 inch wheels, even 18 inch wheels, they act a bit different on the curves. These big wheels are just gonna ride up, no skill required. This is just gonna eat up this as if it's not even there. Let me show you. So now I'm just gonna, my knees are bent, knees are flexed, I'm just gonna go up it. There is no real skill required to that. And drop it back down. So you can see with the bigger wheels, there's less effort required than there is with the smaller 16 inch wheels. But I bet I can still get some air off this with a big wheel. It's the same principle of price, coming in a bit of speed, knees bent, waiting for it to hit, and then popping it up in the air. And that's a big, heavy, old wheel. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found that to be of some use to you and you've got the confidence now to get up curbs and also to have a bit of fun when you're out and about in parks and places because the same skills you've just learnt in this video are useful for when you're doing the trails and you find a log or a rock or a stone and you just want to just jump and get some air. Same rules apply. Wait for that contact, pop the wheel up and you look cool in front of all your mates. If you've liked it, then please put your thumbs up, add a subscribe, add comments below, tell me what you think to these uh, skills and tips and tricks, and add your own advice in below to help all of us become better riders. But until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you again on Wheel Life.